This is the Maker Pi K5 Plus, a 3D printer that has nothing to do with Raspberry Pi, but has some neat features of its own. Oh, and it also kind of looks like some kind of space capsule. Let's get started. Haley from Shenzhen, China, the Shenzhen Soon Gone mm, Technology Co. LTD, otherwise known as Maker Pi, might be a company you've never heard of. I certainly hadn't, but they've been around since 2012 and appear to have started out like so many other Chinese-based 3D printing companies, creating MakerBot replicator style machines. This thing, however, looks very, very different. The K5 Plus is their latest offering and sports a print volume of 200 by 200 by 300 millimeters in the Z, an all enclosed sheet metal design with this humongous injection molded plastic front with integrated door. The single piece must have cost a fortune and the styling is pretty out there, that's for sure. The K5 Plus is single direct drive extruder with an all metal hot end and the implementation is unusual indeed. It clips into place and can be detached quickly and easily, just make sure there's no filament loaded and the machine is powered off. This feature is taken advantage of for the assisted bed leveling routine, which is basically a micro switch on a 3D printed mount. The printer directs you to tighten all four corners of the bed via the color touch screen and raise them up until the switch is engaged. It's easy enough to do, however in my case the print bed ended up being a bit too close and I had to go back around and manually adjust it a little bit lower again, so yeah, that needs a little bit of refinement. The swappable hot ends could also be handy for high demand environments if you get blockages for example, or if you want to add additional modules for different nozzle sizes for example, but sadly the printer only comes with one. Luckily though, you can pick them up and the printer itself from the Amazon store. Oh, and the printer also didn't ship with any filament. This is all my stock, no spool or even samples, so that's pretty unusual. So grab some separately to avoid disappointment. Now, onto my favorite part of this printer, the print bed. It's a glass plate with this quite coarse printing surface. Printing surfaces can be hit or miss, but this one is working out to be incredibly strong and durable so far. Well, at least it was until last night when I adjusted the bed too close and wrecked it with a PTG print. But that's my bad, it's on me. Sorry Maker Pie, I'll put a new sheet on it soon. But all of that aside, check this out. Flick two metal clips out of the way and the whole glass print bed slides out. Awesome. That means you can get good leverage onto the prints to crack them off when the print's done without ruining bed level or damaging the printer. Love it. Other creature comforts include a filament runout detection on the back, power loss recovery, and a custom 32-bit control board with silent steppers, as well as Wi-Fi connectivity and a built-in webcam. However, not all is as it seems. You see, when you do a simple unloading routine, it drops the bed all the way to the bottom to home, and then brings it back up and then back down again before it will actually start withdrawing. It does heat during this time, but it takes an awful long time to do that. And this is really unnecessary and strange, but what's even weirder is the sound. And getting to the bottom of it, the actual machine uses different drivers for the bed, the Z axis and the extruder, and then uses the two silent stepper drivers for X and Y. I don't know why MakerPie has done this. They should just slap silent stepper drivers on all the axes and the machine will be much more quiet during operation. Anyway, time to look at some prints and I did quite a few tests. The K5 Plus has USB connectivity, so I plugged in the provided USB to find some demo prints. And to my surprise, like half of them didn't work. The line did work though. So here it is in a yellow PLA. Next was this 3D scanned cat in red PLA. Perhaps a little stringy, but overall decent at 0.15 millimeter layer heights. But something that didn't sit very well with me was the provided software. It's a reskinned Cura with MakerPie machines and profiles loaded in, which is great, but it's the old Cura. And I know for a fact that free slices have become a lot better since then. So I did some tests with Prusa Slicer and Cura 4.0, making some new profiles from scratch and I copy pasted over the fairly unusual start and end G-code scripts. To test it, I used my one-way roller clutch design 
to stress the profiles and I found that the Cura 4.0 results was the best with even the raft separating cleanly. So I'll link my profile below if anyone's interested. I use that to print everything else I tested this machine with. Slices really do make a quantifiable difference to print quality. So I suggest MakerPie move to a newer one. My clearance gauge got down to 0.3 millimeter gaps, which is about expected. It's not the best I've ever tested, but only the very best well-designed and tuned printers get below this with a 0.4 nozzle. And I think most people will be content with this level of accuracy. Now about this little hat. I like to print in ABS fairly often due to its superior temperature resistance to PLA and it's slightly more springy properties, which makes it great for snap fittings and mechanical components. But ABS needs heat or it warps. A heated print bed helps, but the heat just escapes easily into the atmosphere. With that in mind, this little hat keeps the heat contained, effectively creating a passively heated chamber for superior 3D printing results in ABS or other high temperature plastics. Now, heating that bed 200 degrees C does take quite a bit of time, like five minutes or so, but damn does it do ABS good. I print it with a brim for security, but that just peels off the edge afterwards. You let it cool down slowly to avoid any warping post print. And the ABS prints are so nice. I'm really happy with it. PGG works as well, but it's a little bit stringy. I use this uh, translucent green, but you definitely could tune your settings to make it a little bit less stringy. And it was also fantastic for functional parts where you need a little bit more temperature resistance to PLA. And just a side note, be aware that if you print high temp materials like ABS or PTG, then go back to PLA, you might experience some under extrusion issues like I did here with the Polyalchemy FX. Uh, and that's because it's an all metal hot end. So what I did is I chucked an oiler on and printed some PLA at a much higher temperature than normal, like two, 230 or so. And then it cleared up perfectly and I started getting results like this again. And so that's how I solve any under extrusion issues after going between high temp and low temp filaments. Okay, so what about that Wi-Fi connectivity thing? Well, according to the woefully poorly printed manual, uh, seriously, what is this? It's a local direct connection only, not to a network. You connect to the machine's Wi-Fi, enter the super secure password, and then at the right address, you get an interface with the camera's view and the ability to kill or pause the 3D print. Yeah, that's it. Walk too far away from the connection and it drops. Doesn't that somewhat defeat the purpose of remote monitoring? I wanna check this machine when I'm like at the shops or somewhere else, not when I'm near it, cause then I can just look at it. Uh, it's a great first step for sure. The camera's good, but I'd absolutely prefer the ability to connect to my home network or send prints wirelessly in the first place. Now back to that removable print head concept. The K5 Plus also shipped with a laser head to engrave all kinds of materials, or at least mine did. It's an interesting idea for sure. But considering the printer lacks any kind of fume extraction or safety gear for actually using a laser, like laser goggles, it's super stupid and dangerous. Sorry guys, I take safety seriously on this channel and though I did test it, because I, I own the right safety gear and it does work, it is negligent. Look, it's working, just no. At this stage, the MakerPie K5 Plus feels about 75% complete. Its printing quality is decent. I've got some really good prints off it and the removable print bed is awesome. And the fact it can do ABS so well is almost a selling point on its own. But that flashy injection molding doesn't distract from the extremely limited user interface as well as the strange mix of motor drivers and spotty construction quality. And well, we've all seen how this story goes. The unit has been updated and those issues are now fixed, etc. Well, this time I truly hope that is the case. Make the Z-axis quiet, make this little hat secure in place on its own without tape, like give it Velcro or clips or something, and turn that Wi-Fi connectivity into something genuinely useful with the ability to wirelessly connect and send G-code from anywhere using Octoprint or something similar. Because the camera is quite good, do all that and this will be a formidable 3D printer. And look, I do truly mean that. Here on Makey's Muse, I produce unbiased reviews, and I realize I've been a bit negative with some aspects of this 3D printer, but it's valued at $700 US, or just a bit over $1,000 Australian, GST included. So when you consider that, and the quality of prints I am getting off it, especially in the high temperature materials, it really is an interesting machine, and one worth considering, especially if they make those few changes that I've suggested in this video. 
If you want to pick up one of these, then you can find purchase links below in the video description. And full disclosure, MakerPie sent me the K5 Plus free of charge for purpose of review. And all opinions are my own. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more on Makers Muse, then maybe, not, maybe consider subscribing. Yes, subscribe. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I'd love to have you on board. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.